Hello students. Today we will learn about a topic belt pulley. So what is a belt pulley? So these are used to transmit power from one shaft to another between parallel shafts so you see that there are two shafts there is a driven shaft and a driving shaft so these two shafts when you extend them you can see that they are parallel to each other okay so belts or and pulley so pulley is a circular object okay which you can see here there are two pulleys here and there is a belt so this belt and pulley are used to transmit power from one shaft to another so from driving shaft to the driven shaft we are transmitting power with the help of this belt and pulley so these are used to transmit power from one shaft to another between parallel shafts which is shown in the figure so the belt drive okay this arrangement is called as the belt drive so this belt drive mainly consists of three elements so what are the three main elements of the belt drive there is a driving pulley so you can see this pulley is which is on the driving shaft is called as the driving pulley okay so this driving pulley is mounted on the driving shaft and there is a driven pulley okay which is mounted on the driven shaft and there is a belt so the three main objects elements of belt drive are the first one is the driving pulley the second one is the driven pulley the third one is the belt okay so the power is transmitted from the driving pulley to the driven pulley because of friction between the belt and the pulley surface so how does the power get transmitted so power gets transmitted because of friction between the pulley that is the circular object and the belt so from the driving shaft or from the driving pulley to the driven pulley there will be power transmission because of friction between this pulley and this belt so the power transmitted power is transmitted from driving pulley to driven pulley because of friction between the belt and pulley surface okay so we know that power is transmitted with the help of this belt drive but there are factors which are affecting the power transmission so what are the factors which affect the power transmission the power transmission depends on material of the belt so what kind of material is used to make the belt then friction factor so what is the friction factor developed between the belt and the pulley then the velocity of the belt 
that is the speed with which the belt is rotated okay then the arc of contact between the belt and the smaller pulley so the smaller pulley is nothing but the driving pulley the arc of contact between the belt and smaller pulley then the tension in the belt so these are the different factors which will affect the power transmission then the next topic which we will discuss here is a classification and application of belts classification and applications that is where these belts are used so how are they classified they are classified based on the material used for making the belt the belts are classified on the basis of material used for making the belt that is for the belt so how are they classified they are classified as leather belts where the material used is leather then the second one is the rubber belts so here rubber is used to make these belts then the third one is the fabric belt where cloth is used then the fourth one is the balata belts so even in we will get into the detail of these belts and we will know what these actually are made up or how they are made of the first one that is the leather belt so leather belts are used both in dry and wet weather conditions so these belts are useful in both dry and wet weather conditions so these belts can be used even in wet areas also then the second type of belt is the rubber belts so rubber belts are preferred in chemical industries so these are preferred in chemical industries they are used in saw mills and paper mills where the belts are exposed to moisture so application of this belt is they are used in saw and paper mills where they are exposed to moisture so it means that these rubber belts are not affected by moisture but rubber belts are not preferred where these belts have to be exposed to heat and oil because they get quickly destroyed so they are not used where they are that is where the rubber belts are exposed to heat and oil as they get destroyed quickly the next type of belts are the fabric belts so fabric belts are made from canvas or cotton and then 
impregnated with linseed oil to make it waterproof so these belts can be made fabric means they are made from cloth that is it may be from cotton or canvas canvas a bit harder than cotton and then so simply they are not made with fabric and just left but they are and impregnated that is they are imbibed with they are impregnated with linseed oil okay this oil will help the material that is the fabric to become waterproof so even when they are exposed to water they are not getting destroyed so they can also be used in dry and wet atmosphere so like the leather belts they can also be used wet and dry atmosphere so these fabric belts are preferred in farm industries as they are cheaper when compared to other belts so they are preferred in farm industries as they are cheap okay the next type of belts are the balata belts so these belts are made from layers of fabrics impregnated with balata gum so as we are using this balata gum we are naming these belts as balata belts so it is nothing but fabric is used layers of fabrics in between these layers we are using this balata gum to make these belts so made from layers of fabric impregnated with balata gum so these balata belts have the advantage of being waterproof acid proof and they are not affected by oils and alkalis so they are waterproof so far we have seen that belts are waterproof but we had not seen that they are even acid proof so even in hazardous acid usage also these belts are not affected and they are not affected by oils and alkalis okay so the only drawback of this belt is that it cannot withstand more than 40 degree celsius temperature and that is why it is not preferred in dry hot conditions so the disadvantage of these belts is that they cannot withstand more than 40 degree celsius temperature and not preferred in dry hot conditions so the belts are further classified as per the cross section of the belt as so based on the cross section they are classified that is the belts are classified as flat belts so here in the figure 1 we can see this is the flat belt here and from the figure b we can see this is the v belt so the shape is a bit appearing like v that is why it is named as v belt the third one is the rope belt you can see it is a 
in the form of a circle here okay so based on the cross section the belts are classified as flat belts v belts and rope belts okay now a flat belt is used to transmit small power from one pulley to another and their distance is not more than 8 meter so when is a flat belt used flat belt is useful for transmitting small power okay small amount of power from one pulley to another and the distance between the pulleys is so the condition for using the flat belt is distance between the pulleys is not more than 8 meter then the next type of belt is the v belt okay so these are used for transmitting larger power so here v belts are used for these are used for transmitting large power so flat belts are used for transmitting small power and v belts are used for transmitting large power but these belts are suitable for short distances only so they are suitable for short distances only okay the groove angle lies between 30 degree to 40 degree so here you can see there is a groove formed here okay because this is a v belt there will be groove formed here and this angle should be 30 degree to 40 degree the groove angle must lie between 30 degree to 40 degree then the next type of belt which we will discuss is the rope belt okay so these belts are made up of cotton or steel and they are circular in cross section so they may be they are made up of cotton or steel and as we have seen in the figure they are circular in cross section they are circular in cross section okay so the advantage of this rope drive is that number of separate drives may be taken from one driving pulley so the advantage of rope drive is that a number of separate drives may be taken from one driving pulley so here i have said that these rope drives are made up of steel so steel ropes are preferred when large power is 
transmitted over long distance so when do we use this steel ropes steel ropes are used when large power so if you want to transmit more power over long distance that is 100 to 150 meter so where these steel rope drives are used they are used in so applications of these drives in mining in cranes that will lift very heavy weights and in conveyors and in suspension bridges okay now we will look into the advantages and disadvantages of flat belt so we have studied about flat belts and v belts so we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of flat belt so what are the advantages so the first advantage is that the design of flat belt is very simple and it is relatively cheap its design that is the design of the flat belt is simple and it is relatively when compared to v belts it is cheap then the second advantage is that it can be easily repaired if broken so the advantage is that it can be repaired easily if broken the third advantage is that it can absorb shock and vibration as it is flexible so it can absorb shock and vibrations as it is flexible okay the fourth advantage is that it can be used for considerably long distances that is up to 20 to 30 meter also it can be used for long distances that is up to 20 to 30 meter okay then the last advantage says that it can be used in abrasive atmosphere as in machine shop so it can be used in abrasive atmosphere abrasive atmosphere as in machine shop okay now what are the disadvantages so it has always a slip that is it will slip away easily so whenever i listen about the whenever i read about a flat belt the only thing which comes into mind is the floor mills so these kind of flat belts were used in floor mills where they grind the floor okay then because it has slip or it has variable slip it cannot have constant velocity so it cannot give constant velocity because of variable slip the third disadvantage is that it has short life and it is not preferred for high speed ratio so it has short life that is the flat belts are broken easily and not preferred for high speed ratio
then the last disadvantage is that it cannot transfer high power so they are used for transmitting small powers but not very high power so that is one of the disadvantage so it cannot transfer high power now in the same way we'll look into the advantages and disadvantages of v belts v belts advantages so this v belt is a compact belt as the distance between which it is transferring the power is very less so it is a compact drive as distance through which the power transmitted is less that is 5 meter then here slip does not exist between the pulley groove and the belt it can provide constant velocity ratio so as in the flat belts we had seen that there is a slip but here as the slip does not exist so here there is no slip at all between the pulley groove and belt that is why it can provide constant velocity ratio okay then the third advantage is that the drive is smooth as it is endless and there is no joint trouble so the drive here is smooth so as it is endless and there is no joint trouble here the operation is very smooth and not noisy as in the flat belt as the grip is better the operation is not noisy as flat belt as grip is better so this belt will observe shock easily particularly at starting so during the start this belt will observe the shocks very easily at starting so one of the advantage of v belt is that it can provide high velocity ratio that is up to 10 and also it has a long life so it can provide high velocity ratio that is up to 10 and has long life now what are the disadvantages of these v belt okay the first disadvantage of this v belt is that it cannot be used to transmit power through larger distances so you can transfer power for a short distance with the help of v belt so you cannot use it for transmitting power at larger distance through larger distances repairing is difficult once it breaks and generally it is to be 
replaced so you cannot repair once it breaks so when the v belts break you will have to replace them but you cannot repair them and generally it is to be replaced the next disadvantage is that the construction of pulley and belt is complicated and also costly the construction of pulley and belt is complicated and also costly so the life of this belt the life of the v belt is very much influenced by changes in the temperature improper belt tension and mismatching of belt lengths so the life of this belt that is the v belt is very much influenced by changes in temperature improper belt tension and mismatching of belt lengths so these are the advantages and disadvantages of v belts now let us look into the difference between a comparison between the flat and the v belt so now we will look into the comparison between the flat and v belt so we have already seen the advantages and disadvantages of both flat belts and v belts now comparison between flat and v belts so let us consider it as flat belt and here we will write the v belt so we want to compare so the first the first comparison or the first difference between the flat and v belt is that it is used for distance up to 10 meter so flat belts are used for distance up to 10 meter but v belts are used for very small distances so used for small distances then the second difference is that efficiency of transmission is low so the efficiency of transmission of power in flat belts is low of transmission is low here efficiency of transmission is high in the v belts is high then the construction of flat belts is simple so the construction is simple the construction of v belts is difficult and costly is difficult and costly then the fourth comparison or the fourth difference is that they are cheaper in initial and repair cost so the flat belts are cheaper they are cheaper in initial and repair 
costs. But V belts are costly as well as a repair is not possible. So these are costly as well as repair is not possible. Then the next difference is flat belts are suitable for moderate power transmission. So these are suitable for moderate power transmission. V belts are suitable for high power transmission. For high power transmission. And the last difference or last comparison is that the flat belts cannot give constant velocity ratio because of slip. So it cannot give constant velocity ratio because of slip. But V belts can give constant velocity ratio because there is no slip. So it proves constant velocity as slip does not exist. So this is about the comparison between the flat and the V belts. Now the last type of classification of belts is done based on the arrangement how the belts are arranged. So based on the based on their arrangement belts are classified as open belt drive open belt drive and cross belt drive so here you can see the arrangement of the belts in open belt drive as well as in the cross belt so here you can see the belt is arranged in a open fashion here you can see it is cross belt is crossing at one point okay so here you can see this is the slang side this is the tight side this is the driven shaft and driven pulley here this is the driving shaft and driving pulley the arc of contact between the belt and the pulley is shown here so open belt drive so these type of drives are used when shafts are parallel and the rotation of both the shafts have same direction so they are used these belts are used when shafts are parallel and also and a rotation of both the shafts has same direction so when the shafts are rotating in the same direction okay so if one shaft is rotating in clockwise direction the other shaft is also rotating in the clockwise direction only then this open belt drive is used cross belt drive so cross belt drive is used when the shafts are parallel and they rotate in opposite direction so the shafts are not rotating in the same direction so these belts are used when shafts are parallel and they rotate in opposite 
direction. So if one shaft is rotating in clockwise direction, the other will be rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. So here we are taking an application of this belt drive for application of belt pulley in photocopier machine that is the Xerox machine. So here you can see the arrangement of this belt and pulley here. Okay. So here there is a toner that is nothing but it is an ink. Okay. Toner particles make an inked image on the belt. Okay. These particles will make image on the belt. So a bright light scans across the entire document. So here there is a light source which will scan across the document. Then an electric shadow of the master copy is created. So when you send a copy here what happens is first of all the light will fall on the copy which you want to make duplicate of. Okay. So when the light falls, then electric shadow of the master copy will be created. So because of the light, the shadow will be formed. Okay. And this toner will make an inked image on the belt. So the master copy which is present will have a electric shadow. So what this machine actually does is when you send a original document the light will fall on that document then it will create an electric shadow of that master copy that is the original copy. Then this toner will make an inked image on the belt which is present here. Okay. Then what we will do we will send a blank sheet on which you want to have the photo or the duplicate copy. So that blank sheet is fed and imparted a positive charge. So when you send the blank copy here, what it will do is this belt will form the image on this blank sheet. The fuser unit makes the ink on the sheet permanent. So there is a fuser unit here which will make the image permanent and the duplicate copy comes out. So this is how the photocopier machine works which is working on the principle of the belt and pulley. So I hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.